Now, what is the hardest thing about tying a Prince nymph? It's those goose biots, right? They give me all sorts of trouble. Well, I've got a Prince today, doesn't even use them. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I'm talking about, it's called the Easy Prince. That's E-Z-Y Prince. Now, I found it in the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia in the all-purpose nymph section, and the best that I could figure, it was created by Al Beatty. Now, he was the editor of the book, and the one in here was tied by him. And he's got a couple of videos out there of tying some of the wet flies in the Easy Y series. Now, I've got a dozen or so of these in my boxes at any given time, and I will use this pretty much any time I'd use a Prince nymph, but the beauty of it is that it takes half the time to tie. So I hope you'll give it a try. I really like the pattern. I think you will too. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the Easy Prince. And man, I really love this pattern. Can be tied in regular print sizes. I'd say as big as a 10 down to an 18 or so. I'm gonna tie it on a 14. It's a 14 standard nymph hook with a 2.4 millimeter tungsten bead. And I'm gonna put down some weight. This is 015. Seven or eight wraps, mainly to lock that bead in, but also gives you the advantage of a little bit of extra weight. This thing will get deep with you. And see that? That was not a very good whatever. I just kind of messed it up a little bit, but I fixed it and now we can jam that right up in that bead and break this off right here. Okay, and I'm gonna use some black thread it's a 70 denier. I'll put a little dam right behind it, and I'm gonna put a few wraps up over the weight, and then take it back to the bend of the hook. Okay, now let's go with the tail. And the tail in this, brown Antron fibers. Antron or Zeline, I forget which one this is. But you can put it a little bit longer. We'll trim it to, to size if we need, or you can just kind of guess your size and probably a hook gap pretty much about the length that you would put the brown goose biots on a regular prince so is that eh, that might be a little bit longer than we want but we can trim it in a second and I'm going to use this front piece right here just put a couple of loose wraps right here to help fill in this gap behind the weight there we go that's going to work and we also have a rib you can use this rib to help fill in this gap. Let's back our thread off a couple of turns, catch this in at a 45 degree angle, and then pull it until it's just right behind the, the weight. That will help you oh, fill in the gap and not have a, a step right there. Okay, we're looking fine now. Let's catch in a couple of strands of peacock curl. Use two, three, four if you want. I've found that that two works just fine, so I haven't needed to go any with any more than that. So I'm just gonna catch them in all the way back to where I'm gonna start wrapping. And if I can break these off here, good. If not, snip them. Okay, I'm gonna leave my thread at the middle of the hook just in case these start spreading out on me. But with using two, they're probably not going to. But if you were using three or four, strands of hurl. It's good to keep your, your thread midway and then just use the wraps to push it up as you go. And we're gonna stop about a bead width behind the bead because we've got two more components to put on in just a second. Okay, a couple of wraps to lock those in. You might be able to break those off as well, but this hurl is getting a little bit thick up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip them. Now I am going to counter wrap this rib three or four turns. It'll give you a little bit of flash, not really necessary, but it's really just locking this hurl in and making it much stronger of a fly. Now here's a, a tip when you counter wrap a rib like this, leave it up to the top, at the top, and then let's take a wrap around it, reverse our thread, maybe a couple wraps right here, and now reverse it again, and we will really have locked it in. 
Just be careful right there. Okay, so I've gotten several reverse wraps on that wire. And this is a brassy if I did not mention that. A brassy or small would be fine. So go ahead and spin that off. And if you've got a little sharp nub, you can always just take a few loose wraps right there to try and bury it. I think we're in fine shape. But you know what, that tail is just a little bit longer than I want. I'm gonna go ahead and shorten it just a touch. There we go, perfect. Now, some more of this Antron, Zelon, whatever you got. Uh, just, you know, the same thickness of strand. I'm gonna catch this in, uh, kind of long. I'll, I'll trim the back in a second. We wanted about a body length. So let's go ahead and catch this in right here. Two or three tight wraps. And I don't want to get too far up close to the bead because we still got a, a hackle up here. So let's snip this excess off up front. And now this back piece, which according to Al Beatty, had it about a body length, maybe just a little bit shorter. So if you pull it tight and cut it a body length, it's probably gonna work for you because it'll bounce back just a little bit. Watch this. So there we go, that's the length I want. And, well, let's, let's spin a wrap or two more right here. My thread's spreading out on me, so I'm gonna spin it clockwise and tighten it back up. Now we should be good to go. Now the last component is just brown hackle wrapped as a collar. And use whatever you normally use for prints. You can use dry fly hackle. You can use rooster for this. This is, happens to be a hen. It's not a real soft uh, feather, but it really doesn't matter uh, even if you use a, a rooster, a dry fly hackle, it's gonna be fine. This fly is so heavy with that tungsten bead and that weight, it's not gonna float. It's gonna sink. So feel free to use whatever you want for your brown hackle up here. And we're not putting that many wraps. It's just gonna give it the impression of legs. And I'm gonna use my spring-loaded hackle pliers right here. And we'll see what two wraps does for us. I think two is gonna be fine. Okay, I think that is enough right there. It's going a little bit crazy on me, but we're fine. Okay, we have a little bit of cleanup, and that hackle, is that's a pretty poopy job of wrapping that. But the one I did right before it, oh my gosh, that was so beautiful, you wouldn't believe it. All right, spend a few extra wraps right here to fill in this gap behind the bead and your hackle. And yeah, we're fine. Let's go ahead and wet finish this guy. Four or five turns right there will suffice. Let's get in here and snip this off. And if you use some head cement on these, which I do, I would just pull it back like that, put the smallest drop right there on the bead and then let it drip down over those thread wraps and spin it around and then harden it. So that's it, a very simple pattern. After you done a couple of them it's less than a five minute tie i would bet so that's it everybody i do appreciate you watching y'all take care and we'll see you next time